All right, so it's very clear that Bitcoin ETF adoption is here to stay. On Tuesday, October 19th, the ProShares Bitcoin Strategy ETF debuted on the public market under the ticker symbol BITO. Now on Wednesday, Grayscale launched their own futures ETF, and I'd expect to see new, more Bitcoin ETFs launching regularly over the next few months. Now, anything I say going forward regarding upcoming Bitcoin ETF launches is, is just pure speculation, trust me. I have no idea how this will widely play out, but I do think it's widely accepted, and I think we should treat these ETFs as here to stay. So in today's video, we're going to be covering the Bitcoin futures ETF, the Bitcoin ETF, and then how that might change the investment landscape when it comes to investing in crypto. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency overall has come a long way in the last few years. In 2017, the price of Bitcoin skyrocketed up from about 1,000 early in the year to just over 19K by the end of the year. That's when the general public really took notice of crypto. But during 2018 and 19, the price of Bitcoin stayed around 10K and even dropped to as low as 3K at one point. It wasn't until late 2020 that we saw another 2017 happen when Bitcoin skyrocketed again to where we are today with a few bumps in the road along the way at about 63K. That's a 60 times return in just about five years, but there was a ton of volatility to get there. And it really was a risky investment for many. Sure, if you bought Bitcoin and hung on the whole time, you came out great. But the reality is that a lot of investors didn't actually do that. They bought, they sold, they jumped in and out. Bitcoin wasn't this game that people just bought in 2017 and hung on. Clearly, Bitcoin may not be a safe investment for all investors. So now let's talk about the Bitcoin ETF and what it's really about. Well, the SEC does not currently allow an ETF that tracks the price of Bitcoin. So the only ETFs available to retail investors, you and me, are actually funds that track the future prices of Bitcoin, referred to as a futures ETF. This is a lot different than a standard ETF. The futures ETF does not invest directly in Bitcoin and does not allow you to track the price of Bitcoin in the same way that buying Bitcoin actually does. But it does give the retail investor a way to include crypto futures exposure in your regular brokerage account. So first, let's talk about how a standard ETF even works, right? We've all heard it. ETFs are exchange traded funds that hold individual stocks and allow you to gain exposure to a broad range of stocks. While ETFs can also hold investments such as commodities or bonds, the most common way ETFs are used is in holding stocks. Think about this as a basket of goods that holds all kinds of stocks based on the benchmark that the ETF is tracking. The most common index used for an ETF is the S&P 500, right? which is one of the most widely used indices in the world. In this case, the ETF buys all of the stocks that make up the S&P 500 index, which is basically the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the US. So we're talking Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla, you get it. All the big names out there. When you buy an ETF that tracks the S&P 500 in this case, you are basically buying a slice of all the stocks that are part of this index and therefore gain instant diversification. But you're not actually buying the stocks. You instead are simply buying the fund, the ETF, that holds these stocks. So it's more of an indirect investment in that sense. Now, ETFs use a passive investment strategy in which the goal is to simply mirror and track that index. The ETF does not attempt to outperform or do anything out of the ordinary. It just buys the index. For this reason, most ETFs are super low cost. Like we're talking as low as 0.03% in some cases. So when you hear three basis points, that's what people mean, 0.03%. A lot of people refer to ETFs as, it just costs a few basis points, right? That's what we're talking about. So now let's talk about futures ETFs. A futures contract is an agreement to buy or sell something at a specified time in the future at a predetermined price. It's mostly used for oil, gas, and other commodities in which prices tend to fluctuate. The buyer of a futures contract is taking on the obligation to buy and receive something in the near future at a predetermined price. And on the other side of it, the seller is required to provide that asset at the expiration date. A futures contract allows an investor to speculate on the direction of the security, commodity, or financial instrument using leverage. Futures are also used to hedge the price movement of the underlying asset to help prevent losses from unfavorable price changes. Because of the constant fluctuation in oil prices, for example, futures are often used for this type of commodity, and it's one of the most direct ways to actually invest in oil. Another great example is farmers and corn. Corn tends to fluctuate on a daily basis, but the price that you and I pay at the store 
doesn't fluctuate. It's just really the price that the farmer can sell his or her corn to the third party. So in this case, farmers actually will sell futures contracts as part of this relationship that they have with the public so that we don't actually pay, you know, $4 one day or $5 the next day, price stays flat. Now, futures contract and futures in general refer to the same thing. For example, when someone says futures contract, they're typically referring to a specific type of future, such as the oil, gold bonds, or S&P 500 index futures. So when referring to the Bitcoin futures ETF, this tracks contracts that speculate on the future price of Bitcoin, rather than the current or spot price of the cryptocurrency itself. As a result, the prices of the ETF and Bitcoin usually will not match this. This means that the price of a futures-based ETF could trade at a premium during a bull market or a discount during a bear market. This futures ETF does not actually buy Bitcoin, but instead provides exposure to the Bitcoin futures market. It's very different than a standard ETF that simply tracks the price of Bitcoin. Personally, I stay away from this market because it's pretty high risk, let's be honest. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy it, but I'm saying that this is not a simple ETF like the S&P 500 ETF. I would just rather buy an ETF or a fund that tracks the price of something instead of something that can significantly fluctuate from the actual price. This is a whole nother ballgame. Now, this conversation around Bitcoin ETFs has been ongoing for a while now because retail investors wanted a simplified way to invest in Bitcoin without actually investing in the crypto itself. Unfortunately, the futures ETF doesn't really do this yet. There's a lot of middlemen involved in the futures ETF market, so the price of these is around 1%. So you're paying about a 1% fee. Personally, I'm not really a big fan of paying a bunch of fees that don't actually go towards the ownership of the asset. You're simply just paying the people in the middle. So when we're talking 1%, we're talking 100 basis points, right? Remember those ETFs we talked about earlier? 0.03%, three basis points? Yeah, this costs a lot more. It's something to be aware of. But why doesn't the SEC allow regular Bitcoin ETFs? I mean, come on, this is 2021. Well, the SEC has an easier time regulating Bitcoin futures instead of the buying and selling of Bitcoin itself. And as everything publicly traded and available to the retail investor must be regulated by the SEC, they're only going to allow investments in which they have the ability to regulate. I personally think this could pose some blockers to any standard Bitcoin ETFs that the SEC actually approves. And these are the ETFs that would actually track the Bitcoin price as opposed to any futures market. I have no idea how long it'll take, no one knows, but I am hoping for the day that when you can actually buy a Bitcoin ETF, it actually tracks the price at a much lower price. So the big takeaway of this is that ETFs have been looked at as a safe investment because we've been trained to invest in broad-based ETFs that cover the global market, right? We've heard it over and over again. But this Bitcoin futures ETF and even the upcoming Bitcoin standard ETF are not this safe investment you may think it is. In fact, you could argue that buying the Bitcoin futures ETF might be even more risky than just buying Bitcoin itself. For some investors, that might not make sense. Listen, it's just really important to understand the pros and cons of a new type of investment like this. So it's great that clearly adoption of Bitcoin is growing and that there are going to be many more ways to invest in crypto going forward. But this might not be anytime soon. I have no idea. None of us actually know. Alrighty, thanks again for joining. This is Tony from Wealthfront. Take care.